Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of events, updates, and beautiful stuff happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation, and also Blender as an app. And this week, we do have a couple of news that you guys would want to take a look at. Starting off, Blender 2.83.17, the LTS is now here. The 2.83.17 LTS comes with 8 bug fixes. And of course, if you like to get this, you can get it on the Windows Store, on Steam, or on Snap. So depending on the platform that you're working with, you can update it. And for those who like to simply download this directly from the Blender page, you can go over to the download section and download this. Now with this said, if you'd like to take a look at some of the bug fixes that have been done over time, you can also go ahead and take a look at these ones and see the change logs and see if any of the bugs that you're currently experiencing have been treated before. Now with that said, let's take a look at some of the new features and stuff that will be coming over to Blender 3.0. Now with Blender 3.0 in the works, there is also some very cool things that we will be getting at the end of the day. The asset browser is in full gear as right now we are having an update to it as when dropping materials, the asset browser currently uses the active material slot. And while we talk about the materials, there is also a drop material tooltip. So once you take a material from the asset browser and you're trying to drop this on top of object, there's currently a material tooltip that gives feedback to the user on what is going on and on what object the material is about to be dropped on. And while we're looking at the things that you can now do with the asset browser, let's take a look at some updates within the viewport. So within the viewport like this, you can now go in and view your normals with a constant that is in tandem with your viewport. So in this case, you will notice we have a tiny button here and this actually keeps the size of the normals constant to the relation in 3D view. Now, if this is not turned on and you choose to select the normal either like this, let's say select this normal or maybe this one or let's use this one and increase the size. If you scroll all the way out, you probably wouldn't notice this you know, when you're foul. But then if you click on this button, which is your overlay and you make sure you have this turned on and let's zoom right in. Let's go back and set the size to a size like this. All right. So once we set the size like that and with this button turned on, if we zoom out, you notice that it stays constant in relation to what the viewport looks like. So once you zoom in, it stays that way. Once you zoom out, it stays that way. Something else which is also available within your viewport is the light statistics. So right now if you go in and you make several selections or maybe you make several copies you would notice that we get that update here now if you don't see this if you go over to the overlay section make sure you have statistics turned on and that way you'll be able to see it so what this actually helps you do is regardless of the fact that you'll be noticing how many lights you have it also tells you how many objects you have selected so if i go in and select the camera and then select the cube you notice that it only tells us two objects selected and of course, if you go in and simply select the light, you will not notice that you have the light selected. Of course, this still has a couple of bugs because in most cases, if you have all like, if you have most of your light selected, and then you mix it up with something, this breaks and uh, you don't see the number of lights you have selected. It only tells you the number of objects. And for some reason, once you just do some sort of marquee selection without any of this selected, it doesn't even tell you if the light gets selected in the first place. So this is also, you know, one of those things to just keep in mind. But yeah, it works and it looks extremely nice. Something else that the folks at Blender Foundation have added is the add warning to geometry nodes once you're out of bounds. So a very good example is this. So right now we're within the geometry node. Let's go in and throw in a grid. So at this point, if you're going out of bound, there is going to be a warning that you would see, which will tell you that you probably, you, you know, you're going out of bound. So if I go in and press one on the keyboard and drop that, you see that warning. So this definitely tells you, it's more like an information, or, you know, it's more like an information than warning. So it gives you that information that you need at least two to actually get things up and running. And that looks extremely nice. Something else that is also very nice is if you jump over to the switch node. So let's take a look at this. We've already talked about this one before. So if you go over to the switch node, we already know that the geometry section of your switch node has the yes and the no, which is the true and the false, which means you can switch this back and forth. And this is really cool. And then this wasn't available so much for the texture, but right now it's now available for the texture. So if you load in multiple textures, you can also switch these textures depending on what you want. And I guess you can also do the same thing for materials as well. So based on what you're trying to work on, you can mix these things back and forth and you can get the most out of it. Now, while we talk about things that you can get out of all of this, if you also jump over to your video sequence editor, which you can access by clicking on the plus sign, go over to video editing and then go over to your video editing. You can now play with 
wingdings so if you're into playing with wingdings or special characters this is now something that you can now add you know you can now play with this within your sequence editor and this makes a lot of sense so depending on the fonts that you have like right here i do have a whole lot of fonts so depending on the fonts that you have you can check these things out find one that works for you and you can load this and also use them directly now while we talk about things that you can also do within your viewport or even work with in blender 3.0 if you also want to work with constraint right now the constraints that you have in blender now i have a drop down button so if we go over to the constraint section click and go over to something like a, a follow or maybe a child of you would notice we have a drop down button and you can now easily apply duplicate copy to selected and even do way more things so depending on what you're trying to create and depending on what you're trying to do this will definitely come in handy for your animation and while we talk about animation let's talk about the blog post that folks at blender studio actually shared this week and this week they are looking at animation caching exploration this blog post actually addresses one of the problems that we get to see when we seem to work with a couple of individuals and uh, we're trying to get certain files moved back and forth already blender has a wonderful linking system that can help you link certain materials and also meshes across but in terms of animation and you want to get this thing in all of its totality you know for reviews or maybe for lighting transferring this data back and forth can be dynamically problematic and this is one of the things that they try to address of course they have a wonderful system that gets to work but in most cases transferring these alembic files and actually getting these to represent what it looks like traditionally from the pc that it was created to the next person might come with some challenges and to address this the folks at blender studio created the cache manager add-on now the cache manager add-on actually streamlines the export and importing of alembic caches on a collection basis and it actually makes it even way easier for them to transfer data back and forth now this also makes a lot of sense because once they're exporting the animation cache it also exports the cache configuration json file now with all of this once you import the file back in you'll be able to get the mesh sequence cache modifier the transform cache constraint this just simply makes it even way easier and automates the process and of course if you would like to get this add on yourself you can actually go over to the link which i'm going to put in the description that can bring you right here where you can find all of the blender studio tools that they've made so if you like to make use of the shot builder which is a tool that they've made and they've updated this sometime 9th of october you can grab it if you like to also get the cache manager which was just uploaded on the 13th of october or the blender kitsu you will be able to grab these things right here and start working with them and while we talk about things that you might grab there's a lot of community things that you may want to also take a look at so if you go over to store.blender.org there is a very nice merch that is available which is the blender uv socks now these socks is uh, quite nice from the reviews it looks extremely cool the material is 80 percent cotton and it's available in three different sizes so you may want to come through and check this as this also helps support and also fund the blender project and for those looking for free stuff there's a couple of free stuff that you might get in this week as we have a set of materials that you can get from Hawkmap. So Hawkmap does have a couple of free materials. You might want to come through and grab all of them are procedural so you can come through and pick them up. And you can also go over to Andrew's page where you can see the weight layers. So the weight layers itself is an add-on that actually allows you to create faster procedural weight maps. And depending on what you like to drive with this map, you can use it. It actually makes use of the power of the geometry nodes in 2.93. And this is pretty nice. Andrew is the same creator of the alpha trees, which we've already talked about before. And he's also the creator of the NG viewer. And for those looking for even more free stuff, you may also want to check out the flow map painter. So if you've been looking for a tool that can get you that quick real time sort of water flowing effect, this is the add-on for you. So this add-on gets you up to speed and you'll be having that water sort of effect as quick as possible. So this is a very nice one and a huge shout out to these creators for making this available. Now let's talk about some fun stuff. We've all heard about Cycles X. We've seen how fast it is, how quick it is, but then what if I tell you there's something that is faster and a bit more cleaner than Cycles X that you can lay your hands on? And that is no other than the K-Cycles X. K-Cycles X is available for anyone who likes to get two times faster render than what you can get with Cycles X. It's extremely optimized. Of course, we're going to go ahead and do a review about this one just to prove the whole theory right. 
But then if you are someone that wants to get real time feedback, you want to check out the chats, you want to see these things for yourself, you can do a simple comparison and get started with it. Now the K-Cycles S also comes with an ultra denoiser that gives you even way better quality than what you would get with the default Cycles X. And of course, you may also want to come through and check this result out for yourself. This is what Cycles X gives you with 16 render samples. And this is what K-Cycles gives you with ultra denoiser 16 render samples. So for those looking for speed, K-Cycles X is one tool that you should consider checking out. And of course, if you're not into rendering, probably you are into animation, but then you're wondering how do I even get into animation in the first place? There is a beautiful animation course that is just released and it is known as Alive. Alive is released by the folks at P2Design and currently is at 25% off and it covers every single thing that you need to know to get started with Blender. So from the very basic stuff all the way to how you can work with constraints and how you can work with different sort of models that will be thrown at you within the animation industry, this has it all covered. And to me, I think this is one of the best animation courses out there for Blender users. So just in case you're into this, or maybe you want to learn how to animate mechanical characters, you want to learn how to animate, you know, stylized models, humanoids, or maybe quadrupeds, then you should consider checking this out. The folks at Pizza Design Studio, they also have some very awesome courses for rigging artists and also game character creators. You may want to come through and check out some of the cool things that they have and see these things for yourself. And that's more like it. A huge shout out to all of the contributors of this week's Blender update. And of course, if you'd like to download any of these, or maybe you want to simply check them out, links are going to be in the description for you to grab them as quick as you can. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And I'll see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.